That's so sweet of you. Well, hop on to my flying nimbus, because we really should get going. You mean I can actually ride on this thing without falling? Well, sure, but you do have to have a pure heart. Oh, that's okay. When your dad's the ox king, you always behave well. I'ma kick back and have a good time Time for free, that's how I live my life Inhale high, enjoying the vibes Got no time, no bullshit in my life I'ma kick back and have a good time Time for free, that's how I live my life Inhale high, enjoying the vibes Got no time, no bullshit in my life Super Saiyan with this flow Like the gin of my heart stay cold Smoking on that Saiyan joke Feeling like I'm on a Nimbus cloud, yo I just want it all, I just want a ball Wanna go to the mall, not care about the cars Puffin' on the double stove in a sweet or a raw Hella high, sing a catchy song My mind, stay floating Smoking on this potent Got my mind constantly going Has me going slow motion Wanna be sipping Arizona tea Rolling up the finest feet In San Diego, by the Living how I should be I'm just trying to live my life So my blood and stay lit It's a good drama, that's my mindset Feeling good, just vibing You can catch me smiling I'm up in the clouds, I'm flying Got no time for no bullshit or lying I'ma keep back and have a good time Drama free, that's how I live my life Man, fuck all that drama shit. Take it to my paradise. Give me some video games. Give me some double cheeseburgers. Give me some good ass weed. And let's let's go go. All right, here we are, guys. We're uh, we're back in this piece, and this week is uh, something special. So I went on to uh, Esteban's The Bam Cast and did an episode, right? So we did a collabo together, and um, a part of our deal <laughs> was that I would... Um, Put you know, put up the the episode on my on my platform as well. So I had a lot of fun with this, and I think you guys will uh, will enjoy it. You know, this way you guys get to hear another voice other than my own. I'm sure you guys are like, man, when he gonna when he's gonna work with somebody else, man? We get tired of hearing this guy's voice. Well, my friends, that day has come. And that episode is now. I don't know what I'm going to name it, right? Um, ooh, maybe a night on the town. Who knows? Uh, it has to be something with Edward Scissorhands. Who knows? We'll figure it out, right? But all in all, um, it was a good episode. And um, and that's that. So, you know, hope you guys... I know, I know you guys are going to enjoy it. And I'll catch you guys next week. Let me introduce you to Bo Miles, a unique and likable guy. Everyday life, friends and family he makes up the artist. Yeah, welcome, guys. Uh, let's in, let's uh, let Mr. Uh, Patzer come on in. All right, so here we are. Look, we go. guys, we back up in this piece. <laughs> <laughs> Heck yeah. I'm super excited for this. We've been playing this for quite a while, uh, and I'm glad that we're finally getting to do it. There's a lot of moving pieces, and uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's get on to it. So uh, do you want to talk about what we're going to do today, or do you want me to talk about it? What do you want to do? Uh, so look, guys, we got, we we've been cooking up a treat for you guys, <laughs> and uh, look, we might do a re a redo. Okay, we might reboot it with scissor hands. 
Yeah. We might just fix a beginning, a middle, or the end. We don't know. We might come up with a prequel. We might uh, reboot the whole series. You never know how it's going to go, but uh, it's definitely going to be entertaining and yeah. get your money ready to, to <laughs> buy tickets for this thing. Blockbuster, summer blockbuster. Um, so, yeah, basically the way I describe it, too, is it's either going to be a prequel, a sequel, or a reboot. Basically, these are what-if uh, movie script ideas. So it's just a thought exercise. You guys can, you know, give your input and drop some little ideas. Maybe we'll work it into the script and, you know, pass you a couple of pennies if it, <laughs> if it ever comes out in royalties. We'll see. <laughs> right, right. Probably not. Y'all probably not going to get nothing. Okay. Like, yeah, to be know. honest. Yeah, that's not making no promises now. <laughs> right, right, right. Y'all not, not even going to be able to talk to me no more. Like, I'm going to be like Eris on the stream. Like, <laughs> he's, one, he's one of those. Yeah, me too. I can't wait to not talk to you. <laughs> All right, boom. So it looked like the chat is, I can see the chat. It looks like it's going good. Yeah, yeah. All right. <clears throat> so this is both, this is going to be a live podcast with video and, and, and maybe some uh, thumbnails and stuff we can look at and talk about. And it's also going to be an audio on the, uh, you know, audio side. So, uh, I'm going to leave all the links in the description if you guys want to see the artistry of podcast or the band cast podcast. It'll be in the links of, uh, you know, in the description of this video. All right. So where do we want to start? All right. Well, let's, uh, let's, let's take our initial impressions of the film. Got you. Good idea. And Good then idea. that way we can, all right, look, let's get into it then. Get into so. it. So today we're going to do Edward Scissorhands. It's just a, this is a movie that's near and dear to my heart. How do you feel about it? Do you want me to call you Patser or Bo? It, it, yeah, you call me Pat. It don't matter, I'll man. Call Whatever. You, you call all me right, Ronnie. Right. It don't even matter, man. Like it's all it's all good. But uh <laughs> thanks, Booth. Uh yeah. Man, I, I like the um the music, man. The music, like that was one of the main things mm -hmm. Danny that Elfman just, that just stuck with me about this film. Like when I saw it as a young tyke, it was the music, man. Yeah, uh, the composer is Danny Elfman. Exactly. That that hit that hit home. I think before this movie, I was so young, I didn't really you know, recognize uh composers or, or just music soundtracks in general i think this and batman by tim burton were two of the films that got me into like whoa i need to start listening to these soundtracks i'm real big on movie soundtracks now uh so yeah that was a big one for me other other than that this is a huge movie from my childhood i'm pretty sure a lot of us uh grew up with this movie Around the time, like this movie was kind of meant for us because if you were like a young teen or like a preteen, you kind of felt like Mr. Scissorhands here. <laughs> uh, and then just the aesthetics of it, how dark it was and, and, and the creations and the creatures and, and the, the contrast from that, you know, that colorful town to that ominous castle and all, you know, just the way they played with colors and stuff like that. I like that type of stuff. Yeah, yeah, man. I um, I thought one of the main, like, like I said, the main thing that stuck out to me was the music. Uh, then from there, just the settings, the set pieces, the environment. I really, I really resonated with the snow. Just like in Baltimore, especially during the '90s, we used to get blizzards, and um, I remember you could jump, you could jump out a second story building into the <laughs> snow. Like it was Whoa. that high. Like it was crazy. I'm talking like. 10, 10 feet of snow. So um That's pretty awesome. That sounds yeah. like fun. Jump off roofs and shit, huh? Yeah, yeah, man. It was I mean, it was just fun. Like 90, 80s, like during the late eighties and the early nineties, man, we was getting blizzards. And uh mm -hmm. so like that, just the 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 snow aspect of it really resonated with me. It just kind of made me feel like, you know, like this is winter. Yeah, yeah. This is a this is a Christmas movie, right? Right. This is a Chris, the Christmas movie of Christmas movies. Like other people like to put on, uh, I don't know, Home Alone. What else do they like to put on? Uh, Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. Yeah, Frosty the Snowman. I put on Edward Scissorhands. Uh, I actually haven't watched it in a long time. I I watched it for a good solid decade, like every year. Like no no joke, maybe more, and maybe twice a year. Uh, I I need to go back and watch it, but I'm pretty sure my memory is really clear on it because I've seen it so much. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, man. I um I, I I did a a quick like re a quick speed run on it, 
Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah. So I did a quick speed run um, maybe a couple days ago. Kind of catch me up. Uh, Because one of the main things about these type of films, I I really like it is like, all right, I I watched them as a 10 year old, but my understanding of the world was completely different, covered, right? right? Mm -hmm. It was, look, I couldn't see the world, right? So you watch Mm -hmm. these movies as a 10 year old, but you really don't know what you're watching. So some of the things maybe you're looking at, the action, you you looking at the yeah. different set pieces, right? But you're not really understanding the story and what they're really trying to say on a conscious level. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. As you get older, you start understanding the concept more and more. And the, with the more viewings, you always find something more that you like uh, or understand better. You're like, oh, I didn't get that before. I didn't. They're, they're saying so much in this film. It's crazy. Yeah, um, man. Mm-hmm. No, go ahead. You go ahead. Um, yeah, they're just saying so much in this film. But can I talk about who the cast is here for a minute? All right, yeah. So yeah, we let's got, you know, let's cook it up. Yeah, yeah. You got Johnny Depp as Edward Scissorhands. Everyone knows that. Why, why, Nona Ryder? I was in love with her around this time. <laughs> she plays Kim, the love interest. You got uh, Diane West as Peg. That's the mom. I love the mom in this mom. Like, oh, she was just such a nice lady, well, welcoming. Like, I was like, man, I felt so good. Like when she found Edward, I was like, man, this is like the perfect person to uh find her then you got anthony michael hall who played jim he was the jerk i hated this guy as a kid i hated this guy this was everybody's uh you know if you had a rival at school or if you had a bully at school that was this guy he was like the epitome of that Mm. then you had a bunch of like awesome neighbor characters for sure you know like all that was cool you had what is it alan arkin as bill he was the dad he was also he was really cool like when he gave edward the uh lemonade (laughs) Which was like whiskey. Uh, he was just a cool guy. Like he, he was real chill. I like him. Uh, and then you had Robert. Is it Oliver? Uh, he's like uh, he's Kevin. He's the little brother. He's a. He, I related with him a lot when I was a kid because he got the big sisters and all that going on. All their drama that you're living with. Uh, and then I mean, just like I said, there's a, oh Vincent Price. You can't forget Vincent Price, boy. Yeah. I fell in love with Vincent Price on this movie. I started going back and watching his older movies. Not realizing that Vincent Price was Tim Burton's like hero, dude. Right. Like, apparently, right. Tim Burton didn't have a good relationship with his dad, or not a very close one. So he'd go to the movies all the time, and he saw Vincent Vincent Price. So a lot of his movies influenced him, but he also saw him as a father figure. Right. Yeah. Which is crazy because this movie basically is, it's basically Tim Burton's uh, childhood and the way he felt, how isolated he felt. He felt like so. Basically, he made a drawing of Edward years ago. Uh, and then, because he felt like that, and he had like these scissor hands and stuff, um, and he always wanted uh, Vincent Price to play, you know, the father figure in that film, which is crazy because that's kind of like, hey, you're my dad, I need you <laughs> in my magnum opus over here, and he he agreed, he agreed. Yeah. It's crazy. And it was like his, I think it was his final film that Vincent Price did. Oh wow, that's crazy. Yeah, he like he passed away like three years later. Three years later, it's oh, crazy. I thought it was like three days. Like, look, man, I'm gonna make sure this is gonna be your final film. Like, yeah, always in the morning set it was like but, a, a big uh-huh. uh, conspiracy, but not nah, at right. <laughs> Nah, and they got along great. You know how they say, "Don't meet your heroes," but in this case, it worked out great, man. They, Especially they, when you paying them. You know, look, yeah. man, you pay, like, look, yeah. that's the best way to meet them. Okay, look, man, I'm giving you, uh, yeah. Three thousand dollars to play this short role. He like, all right, well, look, man, you know. Yo, yo, in the chat, welcome, uh, Boost and Nico. Thanks, guys. I do appreciate y'all. Uh, if y'all have any input on this, feel free to, you know, throw it at us, and at some point we'll we'll uh, address it. All right, what do you what do you want to do now, Pat? Sir? What do you think? All right, so let's um let's go ahead and kick it off with with the beginning, mm-hmm. like just kind of quick overview of the story right and then mm-hmm. that way we can know where figure out, okay do we want to reboot it do it just totally go in a different direction do we mm-hmm. do, does it need a prequel, prequel or sequel does it or need reboot. a sequel right yeah. so so yeah so go ahead since you know this is one of the ones that was close to you mm-hmm. go ahead and drop uh you know a quick synopsis of it uh we also gonna pull it up on on here as well but yeah go ahead but um, well, feel free if you if you'd like to do it. Do you, if you, do you have a good memory of it, or what do you want to do? All right, so let's see, man. No, I don't really have a, a good memory. Great of it, memory but, of it. But yeah, but I have it pulled like. Um, so basically, this movie uh, starts with uh, 
it starts with uh, this dreary castle, and you're seeing like little glimpses of it, this and that, right? Um, I don't think you even see Edward in the very beginning. Uh, it's been a while, but the main thing where I remember the movie starts is you have this Avon saleswoman, uh, Peg, the mother figure in this, and she's going door to door in this perfect suburban town, but it's real hypocritical and it's real like, uh, it's really, like it's supposed to be a perfect town, but you find out later that this town is not so perfect and the people are in there are pretty horrible, despite of how, you know, how nice they may seem. But anyway, she's going door to door and not making no sales. And she finally looks at the uh, castle <laughs> or mansion that's on the edge of town. She's like, decides to, uh, you know, let me make a trip out there. If anybody wants any of these, uh, this face makeup or <laughs> this eyeliner, <laughs> uh, she makes a trip up there and she's like knocking, kind of finds, Door open, walks in, and, uh, you know, she explores a little bit. Anyways, makes her way up to the attic. And, uh, you know, she sees some movement, and you see this dark, ominous figure just, like, kind of lurking and just in the darkness. And here comes Edward, uh, you know, <laughs> fucking scissors or claws and all. And he's, he kind of looks like a movie monster. Like, he looks, that's what I like about this movie. It's, it's so many different genres. It's, it's, you know, movie monster, it's horror, it's comedy, it's drama, it's everything. Anyways, she decides, you know, they meet, she's kind of freaked out a little bit, but she's such a nice lady, she decides to bring him down to uh, to live with them, because she just knows that he's there, you know, homeless, basically, like, we're well, not homeless, but, like, living alone. Uh, so, yeah, she brings him into her world, and, you know, every, every everybody that meets him kind of is kind of standoffish with Edward at first. Uh, as the movie goes, they start to, you know, some people start to, to like the guy or love him. And some people just want to use him because he has these great talents. He, he's really artistic. He's, he's actually pretty useful. And it's kind of like some people only like him because they can use him for something, right? Uh, and some people, you know, can see deeper than that. Um, Let's see. I'm trying not to make this take too long. Uh, then, you know, he, he finds that, you know, Peg has this daughter named Kim. It's almost like love at first sight for him, which I don't blame him. He's been stuck in that castle for who knows how long. Plus, right. Well, I know the writer was hot as hell. Also, they were actually a real life couple during this, during this film. She was actually underage though. She was like 17. My, my man was like 25 or something. <laughs> Look, so look, that's how look. That's how you gotta get down. You know, be. Look, man, you playing a, a a monster. You might as well dabble into the dark arts yourself. <laughs> yeah, that's one way to put it. So uh, he falls in love with her slowly, and as he gets to know her more and more, he really starts to fall for her. And at first, she's kind of like freaked out by him. Anybody would be. Uh, and then she starts to kind of catch feelings for him, even even though she has a boyfriend, which is uh, he's a super he's a jerk, man. He's like. The uh, alpha male of jerks, right? Isn't um, he like a foot? Isn't he like captain of a football team, or at least has a jerk? Has like one of those Letterman jackets or something? May, yeah, 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 yeah. He's one of those clean cut. Uh, anyways, um, so of course, you know, all kinds of all manner of stuff happens in between all these events, and uh, you know, they keep so Edward keeps taking this town's abuse. Like they love him one day and they hate him another day. Uh, and especially that boyfriend, he really pushes his button. Uh, but he let, he puts up with it because he loves Kim, and you know doesn't want to doesn't want to go against her in any way. Uh, anyways, it eventually gets to the point where you know they get Edward in trouble because Jim wants to go. He's like a greedy bastard too. He wants to go steal some money from the vault at his dad's house, and uh, Edward goes with him willingly because uh, you know they're like. Because Kim asked him, right? And uh, he ends up, you know, the alarm goes off. Everyone jets. Edward gets trapped with all the doors closed and stuff. And now people are really looking at Edward sideways. Um, and then just from there, just it just keeps getting worse and worse for Edward. And the bully keeps pushing him. He, keep, he keeps literally just pushing him uh, to the point of where Edward just gets to this one scene where he's just like cutting off all this shit. And he's like, fuck this. <laughs> there's a lot of there's this, this awesome scene I should show it where he's just like cutting off his shirt he's like fuck this shit he's like done with this society bullshit and uh 
he like kind of goes on a little bit of a uh, uh, rampage there, which leads into some of the stuff I would like to see for some of my ideas for this movie. Uh, I know I'm skipping over a lot. I just don't want this part to take too long. No, Anyways, sorry. yeah, sorry, yeah, sorry, guys. Uh, I don't want to make the whole video about this synop synopsis, but eventually they chase Edward back to the castle where he came from, and Billy tries to go up there and kill him. Um, you know, at this point, him and him have fallen in love. They've embraced. They both have said, you know, I love you, or this and that. Yeah. And she's ready to leave Jim. Fuck Jim. Um, Put anyways, that, that cock up in there. That's yeah. what happened. <laughs> That's what happened. So Edward uh, goes to the castle. Kim meets him up there, and she's like, you know, I want to be with you, and this and that. Well, when they're having a hugging little embrace, and I think possibly first kiss, um, Jim walks in. He sees that shit, and this dude is carrying a uh, fucking, uh, what is it, revolver. He starts taking yeah. shots at him and shit. Boy. Man, it, it get like the action there really picks up. There's a few moments of action in this film, uh, and that one's really great. It's at the very end. They fight it out. Edward still like he's like a monster, and he could fuck you up if he wanted to. But he's still like he has a heart. Like he has like he he has so much. He's all about love, basically, right? He just wants love. He wants to show love. But this gym guy keeps pushing him. Anyways, he finally like I think Kim finally defends him. Uh, gets him off of Edward, and uh, she's like, you know, she's gonna kill him. She finds like an extra pair of No, she gets his hand, puts it up to his neck, neck, and is telling Jim, "Stop this, or I'll kill you myself." Right? And Jim like kind of freaks out for a minute, but then he slaps that shit out of the way, and it, the the hand cuts Kim. And Edward stands up, and he sees that Kim's fucking hurt, and that's it. That's it. That, they've pushed this man too far. He turns around and fucking Wolverines this dude right in the fucking yeah. gut and walks him towards the window, pulls that shit out, and uh, basically Jim falls out the window and he's dead. Uh, after that, you know, Kim realizes this probably isn't going to work because, you know, he just murdered this guy. And all she wants to do is keep Edward safe. So she takes out, there's like lots of parts in this mansion where Edward was created, uh, which by the way, I skipped to how he was created, sorry. Uh, picks up a claw and basically, um, you know, says, hey, Edward's dead. This is the evidence. Uh, but that's how the movie ends. There's a lot more to it. You guys should watch the film. I'm skipping over it because I kind of want to get to. Right. Know, let me know if uh, I skipped anything that you want to talk about. Uh, oh, all right. So because I, I think no matter how we no matter how we uh, run with this, mm -hmm. we got to bring up this. The old woman. The right? old From woman. The that's the part I forgot. Tells. Yeah. Yeah, so she's telling the story to her From the very beginning, right? Yeah. Right, in the very beginning, she's telling the story to her granddaughter about this boy who had scissors for hands, right? So while she's telling the story, everything that Bam just said, that's what she's telling. Yeah. And then at the very end, we, we, we uh, return to the old woman, and we find out that it, it's her. It's Kim. Yeah. You yeah. Know? She's an old hag, right? That pussy's yeah. been beat up multiple <laughs> times. And, she has uh, grandchildren. She's she telling right. the story to two grandchildren at this point. Right, right, right. So she definitely liked to get cum in her, you feel me? And um, <laughs> and then, you know, like she passed it on to her kids. Like, yo, look, man, let, definitely let people skeet up in you. So, so <laughs> after that, she, she says, you know, I, I haven't been up there to see him. I don't want him to see me as an old, you know, ho. Yeah. Um, I want know, him to remember me the way yeah, I was. Right. That's what it was. Yeah. yeah. So she had that V card pulled, you know? So, so yeah, man, I, I think because no matter how we flip and run this story, look, I got some ideas for who's telling the tale. Right. So, gotcha. so uh, I, I think you look, man, I think you, you knocked it out the park. You summed it up. Yeah. Yeah. If you guys really want to know the story, you should watch the movie first and then come back and watch this. But uh, you know, in the future, all right. Uh, so, what do you do? You want to go into what we should do with it? We yeah, can start yeah, talking look, about. Look, I mean, you want a sequel? You want a prequel? Look, man. You look. How you how you feeling about it? Do you what, feel what? like the story is complete? What, yes. what needs to happen for, so, for today's audience? So, in the audience, if you guys want us want a prequel, sequel, or reboot, you guys let me know. But uh, for me, I definitely want a sequel to this. Now, my sequel might be different from what Patzer has in mind. Uh, I have something kind of clicked up in my head. It's not I complete. Will. We'll work it out. You know, some yeah. details will be missing. Um, but yeah, I would want a, I would want a sequel. 
Uh, also, it's going to be imaginative. Uh, what's the movie that did this? So in my head, and this might be also the uh, 13-year-old boy in me where it's kind of like what I want to see. Uh, but it might not fall under the same movie genre as this one. But it kind of will because Edward Scissorhands with a it's, it's a horror, it's a comedy, it's a drama. You know, it's a love story. Uh, it's about a perfect town, but it's also about these ominous, you know, subjects. So the story might go in a different direction, is what I'm trying to say. All right, Patrick, what do you think? All right, so with the, I like man, I would like a like a reboot or because like if we take it to a dark place like like all right we make him the anti-hero that's what i want i want him to be an anti-hero right see so now i feel like but that look that that's a good that's a good uh origin story right a good Mm -hmm. beginning story yeah Um, yeah solid so the sequel is all right progression of him look mm -hmm. and now he's he's this new you know this new imagine this new reimagining of him so so when we say anti-hero, we would mean someone like, for me, I would mean someone like the Punisher or like the Crow. The Crow would be a good one. The yeah, Crow would be a good yeah, one. That's exact, yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking, right. you know, is uh, like the Crow. <laughs> yeah. Boo says Claymation reboot. And it's not a bad idea. It'd be like Coraline. The look would be there. It, and actually, it could be. It could be live action. It could be uh, in any media, right? It could be animation or it could be Claymation. Right, they they should combine. They should. This Ooh. film, yeah, this film needs to be a combination of everything that came before it. Yeah, yeah. you see, like get to give it something new, to give it that new, that like you know something is something is something is weird about this, right? It needs that because because Edward is weird, right? Eddie Eddie sees. Look, man, he he's weird. He needs a film to really capture the essence of him. Right, because now we're going to be looking at it from his perspective. That would be cool. What, like, what if it would be so? It would start live action, but any time there would be any kind of like uh, drama, it would switch to like a different media, like uh, medium. I like so, that. like, let's say, like the action scenes would all be like. Uh, have you seen that show Castlevania? Like, super stylized action, basically. Imagine vampires or Blade, uh, that type of stuff, right? Uh, but the drama would be maybe in, in real life. And then like the segments where it kind of like they're falling into this perfect utopian society, that would be like claymation or, or something else like that. Yeah. That would be cool. Yeah. And, and, and like blending it too. Blending where it. Where yeah. it's not just one thing, but it's like, it's like, it's blending each. So let's say the whoever's playing Edward Scissorhands. He has like what Jack from um, Jack from A Nightmare Before Christmas, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you probably would have to shoot. You would have to shoot the movie. Like my thinking from a technical level is that you would have to shoot it several times. So you would have to have a claymation um, part of the scene that you've done. Mm-hmm. You have the regular. And then you have the regular with the green, with the green work, with the green screen as well. Yeah. And then that way in, in post-production, they're blending it all together to, you know, to give it that, yeah, like, yeah. man, this is weird. Like, how has it been done? And so from a technical level, like, that's how I'm seeing, that's how I'm seeing, you know, it all come together. Yeah. And there's actually a movie that has kind of done something sort of like this, not, not as far as we're talking about. But if you guys have seen that Mr. Rogers movie, I think it's called Won't You Be My Neighbor or something. Uh, it's all about Mr. Rogers' life, and well, it's not all about his life, but it has to do with that and some guy that's going through some issues that used to love Mr. Rogers, and he has to interview him. Uh, it goes from segments of real life, but anytime he goes into a dream state, he's inside the puppet rolled. Remember, yeah. Mr. Rogers had a uh, what was it? What was the kingdom called? The uh, Kingdom of Never, whatever it was, I forget now. But yeah, he's talking to the puppets. He's puppet sized. It's crazy. They're fully animated. Pretty cool. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so what, what you want? You, we we want to cook up the sequel or what? Or you want to? I would like reboot? the sequel, but if you want right. to do the reboot, you can do the reboot. You want to go no, first? No, no, or? no. We can uh, look. Look, let's cook up the sequel, uh-huh. and uh, you know we're going. We go, look. Let's let's do that. I'm ready for the sequel. Okay. So let me show some uh, quick clips. I'm not going to have to sound too loud, but uh, just so you guys have an idea of like where I'm coming from. 
The only time I would watch Edward through the hands again, I was a 13 year old kid. So I'm like, like Pat just said, you see some stuff more than other stuff. You focus, you're not completely understanding what the story is telling you, but it would still fit. Uh, anyway, so we have parts of this movie where you can see the anger that's building up in Edward and, and, and it definitely builds up in three different scenes specifically, maybe more, uh, where he's being this great guy, but people keep stepping on him. So here's one after, uh, he got, they got in trouble for, uh, breaking into Jim's dad's house. And he sticks up for Kim, doesn't tell, doesn't rat on any of them because he ain't no rat, and uh, takes it all on his shoulder. He, yeah, he gets in trouble, right? And that's basically he was trying to, he was trying to build this beauty parlor because he's good at cutting hair, right? And all that got taken away from him. Uh, anyways, this is basically him, him uh, taking that on the chin. Let me share this with Pat or two. Let me see what would be the best way. Let me know if you can see this, Pat. Um, yeah, yeah, I can see it. I can see it. Pull it, maybe. Um, we'll just pull it. You can see it? Just yeah, fine? Yeah, yeah, I can you see it. See, you see the YouTube page or no? Yep, yeah, I see the YouTube page. All right. Uh, oh, wait. Let's see. So It might sound terrible and look terrible for you, but don't worry. The end of the product will look good over here. All right. Um, um, so, yeah, so this is basically him, the way he deals with that after him, like, he thinks... Kim is running to her boyfriend to, uh, you know, just run back to him and forgot about Edward. But she's actually going out there to scold his ass and being like, how could you do that to Edward? This is where she kind of starts feeling for him. Uh, I wonder if you guys can see it over here. There we go. There we go. You guys should be able to see it now. So. So she's like, this bitch, after everything I did for her, still running back to this asshole. When are you going to stop? Now, I did what I could. My old man thinks he's retarded, otherwise he'd still be in jail. What more do you want from me? You could tell the truth. So could you. You were there, too. Oh, it wasn't my do. You uh, know the I overlay is messed up, Blue says. The overlay is messed up. I don't get why you give such a shit anyway. The over oh, yeah, that, that, that happens. Don't worry about the overlay. That'll happen whenever I play a clip like this, and I'm sharing it with Pat's here. Wait. So this man is, is irate right now, scratching up the fucking walls of the house where they took him in, and he gets in trouble for this later on. But just listen to the music. Yeah. And he's so angry. He kind of hates this scene. He kind of hates himself, but he hates the role, too, the way they're treating him. And that, it does, this clip kind of cuts off because this is all I could find of it. But he does it, this, he scratches a few more times, and it gets more intense every time, right? So I love these scenes of his aggression and his anger building up. The other one that I love is, uh, this is one of my favorite scenes. This is the only clip I could find of it. Yeah, this is when Tim Burton was great. This is his best film to me. This and, uh, what was the other one I'm going to say? Beetlejuice, maybe? So, so this is after Edward's done with this fucking society bullshit like he, he wants to be himself he's tired of this get, get pushed uh they always blame everything on him they always like trying to say he's a monster so to me this is the part where he's like you want me to be a fucking monster all right i'm gonna be the monster you guys want me to be <laughs> he's cutting off all his shit i used to love this scene i would just play this scene over and over all the kid look at this shit <laughs> And the neighborhood's freaking the fuck out. I would too, man. Fucking fucking tires and shit. It's crazy because you you get to see how dangerous he can be if he if he wasn't this nice, lovable guy. Then you got this religious freak right here who who's been calling him, saying he's the spawn of Satan and all kinds of shit. The whole movie trying to turn the town again against him. Well, she's finally getting her wish, but he's tired of her shit too. So he goes out to her fucking bushes. This is where the movie kind of turns into a horror movie, too. Like a slasher or something. <laughs> Leaves her a nice little devil. It's like, here, bitch. <laughs> I'm going to be a devil? I'll be a devil. So I love all these scenes. Those are cool. That type of stuff. A lot of my sequel is going to be based off of this type of shit. Uh, and then, of course, the final act. Again, if you haven't seen this movie, go fucking watch it before you watch this. 
This will be the last scene. Yeah, yeah, Batman Return was. was yeah, yeah, yeah. Batman was good, too. Cool. Alright, so that's where he takes him out. Fuck Jim. Alright, so All right. let me take that out of here. Um, Alright, let's stop screen sharing. Yeah, the overlay misses up whenever I do that, so don't worry about it, guys. I do appreciate it. But uh, yeah, these type of scenes uh, just drew me to this movie. Because you feel like this when you're a teenager. You feel like people are, are you know, they're not understanding you. or They keep pushing your buttons, right? Uh, but yeah, he was done with Jim at that point. He, he hurt the love of his life. And it wasn't so much that he was protecting himself. It was more like he's going to protect her because he's already uh, hurt him. But yeah, that's, that's where that goes. Um... All right, so yeah, this was basically like, what was it? Like a gothic fantasy or fairy tale, right? That's what this was. Uh, I want to kind of continue on, on to that. All right, so for me, mm, let me make sure I'm not, everything looks good. We don't need to share this anymore. All right. There we go. All right, so for me, um, I would like, you know what I can share? I can share one more thing. Let me share this. Uh, I'll show this with you two pads here. All right. So, you know you can see it. All right. So the overlay is going to be... Ah, you know what? I'll do this with the overlay so it doesn't look so bad. All right. So for me, I found like images online. And this sequel that I want to make, it would be awesome. Because it would be a mix of things. It would be a slasher movie, for sure. Right? Where we get moments like what you just saw where uh, he's creeping in the background. You see this figure. Pe the, the music tones and pitches change. Uh, doesn't mean he's going to be a slasher, or maybe he is. You won't know, right, till as the movie goes on. But, there's, you know, here's another image I found. It's kind of like, because uh, he's kind of like Frankenstein's monster almost, right? Yeah. This gives it that black and white feel. There might even be black and white segments in it. Uh, maybe from the flashbacks, like Boost was saying. Uh, here's, uh, you know, some more. There's, there's actually quite a bit of blood in this in this film, even though it's not a horror movie, right? So you see this blood on his claws and he's kind of like, you know, there's like something mentally going on with him right there where he's like, man, is this all I am? Is this what I'm made for? Could I go this route? And this is where he kills Jim for sure. But yeah, this, this is what all these images are, right? They're just different. Uh, but anyways, here's what I want to do. So in the next film, the, the, it opens up, starts at the mansion and you're thinking it's still going to be abandoned and it kind of, for the most part, looks abandoned. Next thing you know, you know, they're doing a little, like, camera fly through. Next thing you know, light, the lights come on, right? And everything's lit up. And it's kind of more like a, a tourist attraction now. There's, like, a class that comes in. And people are, like, looking through it. There's a myth about a scissor-hand man. But it was so far back in, like, the 50s, this movie. Just, this movie can be set anywhere from the 50s to the 70s, is what I read. Uh, and now it's, like, 2000. You know, it might not, actually, I'm thinking about setting it in the 90s, so this might be set in the 90s. But anyways, there's this class going, doing this tour, everything's lit up, and there's a, uh, you know, that, that's like a tourist attraction now, right? It's just this antique home. Uh, anyways, uh, the, ca the camera turns over to this uh, old, like this old guy, right? And you see like little nicks and cuts all over this guy's face. It's not Edward, I'll tell you that right now. But this guy's basically running this uh exhibit now he owns the fucking property he's running the exhibit and uh yeah so he's running it and then this other rich rich guy comes in and he's like hey uh you know i'm trying to buy this place off you we've, we've been going over this for a couple of years now and the guy's talking about how he he wants to demolish this place right he wants to demolish it it's bad look for town uh you know but of course he has other motives it's not so much that he wants to demol demolish this place um so that's how the movie starts right and then you start going into these scenes uh, also this is half-baked guys so uh, it might not make sense i'm just baked i just like thought about it like yesterday and a little bit the day before so the movie cuts over to the next scene and there's like the, it, it turns kind of like into a horror movie like somebody's being stalked by something uh it's like a, I, I imagine a woman right this woman's being stalked through these 
back alleys or something, right? Trying to make it home. Uh, and I don't think, I don't know if it's going to still be in a small town or not, or a big city, but she's being stalked. And, you know, it's a, the whole mo horror movie trope, like this first image that I showed you, you know, like this, this type of feel. She makes it in, in her house. Anyway, she gets it home and whack, you see some scissors. Like, I don't know, go through her fucking gut and slash her all the way up, right? Right? Slash her from gut to fucking nostrils. <laughs> and that's the first shot you see of this dark figure that looks like Edward, right? And you see his hands kind of like glistening in the night, uh, night light, right? Or, or whatever, right? The night uh, moonlight, the moonlight, right? Uh, you might see a scene like this. I'm not sure if I want to completely reveal them or after he slashes her, you see some kind of scene like this, right? It's going to be, this is going to be different. It's not going to be so much like this Edward Scissorhand that we've seen before. It's going to be different, right? Fucks her up. Now, at this point, you're like, let's man. Let's call her Sharon. Uh, what was that? I said, let's call her Sharon. Sharon. All right, Sharon. I'm just her. names. Yes, yes. Right? And the movie goes on like that. Like, there's, it cuts back to maybe possibly some flashback here and there. You're like, man, what happened to Edward? Like, what happened to all that love he had? All, you know, what happened to, uh, you know, every, every, the character that we knew. He's, he's, it was, this character I'm talking about, it was kind of always in him. But uh, anyways, he's going around. There's, there's segments of him killing other people. And there's this, let's say he, uh, on the third person he's going to kill, let's say uh, there's these bots that he's about to kill his like, third victim. And there's these bots that crash through the wall, right? And, and, and take him down. Like, they don't kill him, but they just, like, tackle him or something, right? And these, and these uh, bots, they, uh, this might be claymation at this point. Uh, these bots wake up. They become animated, right? They're like... They uh they look like the bots in the mansion. Remember mm -hmm. that style they had? Let's see if I can find them. Uh, they look like these, but like maybe more up to date. They look like something like this, this type of look, right? Or, or imagine return to all. Yeah, yeah, man. Like yo, that no, that bot right there. No, that other one go back. Mm -hmm. That man, that's scary. Just imagine that. Yeah, yeah. You know, but imagine a more updated, more mobile. You can. And you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. What's going on here? There's these bots that are uh trying to take them down. Right. Well, you you come to find out. Take who the bots are taking. Trying the to take bots Edward are trying down. to take Edward down. Right. Okay. Anyway, Edward gets in a fight with one of them, whatever, and he 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 makes it out alive. Right. Well, you come to find out later on in the story that that rich guy that's trying to buy the mansion uh, used to work with Edward's father. Because remember, the, Edward's father doesn't even have a name. in This movie. He's just uh, he's just the inventor. You know. Like, whoa! Where did he get all these skills from? He must have been something in his in his life before he was just this cookie maker running this cookie factory. If he could build Edward, basically Frankenstein's monster, right? So to me, that's this is the route it's going. Um, so this guy apparently used to work with this with uh, the inventor, which is Edward's father. Uh, but they started building these machines to uh, I don't know weaponize them, basically, right? Uh, yeah, but, I feel I feel you. Don't, you know what I'm know saying? What you don't update you know, them. You know what I'm saying? So he, you know, I guess Edward's father didn't like this. So eventually he pulls out that company and he's on his, uh, you know, he, this is when he goes to this mansion and just kind of turns into a recluse. He ends up creating Edward at that point. This is where the flashbacks, uh, uh, happen, right? Um, so. You find out he was a recluse that whole time. And, and anyway, that, this is the point where they got to. They want something that's within Edward to perfect their machines, okay. right? Because he was, without his brilliant mind, they can't reproduce Edward. Because all these other robots are only like, they're not sentient. Like, they're not alive like Edward. They're just being controlled, let's say, through remote control or whatever, right? So they're not perfect. Uh, so think about this inventor guy, kind of like, Tony Stark, right? He's like, you got other people that can do what he does, but not to his level, you know? Like, think yeah, about Iron Man 2, right? You got all these rip-off robots that just fucking, they, they just don't work. Mm. They're also trying to get into that mansion because he has all his blueprints and his notes in there. That's the other reason that they want that mansion. They want to search for Edward, even though they, don't, they weren't sure he was alive or he was staying there. And they want to get all this information. Uh, so that's kind of like where the movie's at. Um, there's, oh, 
So Edward starts to find out as he's defeating these robots or whatever that, you know, Edward's been, I don't know how long he's been alive, but he's needing new parts, right? So he starts finding out that, hey, this guy has this part that works for my kneecap. This part, you know, it's been going out on me. Uh, so he's like, he can use that to repair his knee. And, and you guys are like, well, how's he going to, he has scissors for hands. How's he going to fucking, <laughs> how is he going to install that or, you know, rig that up? Uh, well, basically that, remember that old guy that I said it was running the mansion? Remember that guy? He, uh, let me stop screen sharing here for a minute. Uh, the, all right. So remember the old guy that was running the mansion? Uh, that's actually his name. Was it, was it Billy? Let me, let me double check here. One second. That old guy was the, the young kid that Edward saved in the first movie. Uh, remember, uh, Jim was all drunk and he almost ran over Kim's brother in the movie and Edward yeah. comes in and swoops him up and saves him, right? Well, but remember when he saved him, Edward was kind of like freaking out, trying to like help him, but he was cutting up his face. Yeah. Remember? Yeah. And that's another yeah. reason they thought he was a monster and they ran him out. Um, that old kid, he took over the mansion. I mean, that, that kid is an old man now. He took over the mansion. That's why he has all the little scars on his face. It's the same kid, right? Um, it's not deep. It's just subtle, like Harry Potter type stuff, right? Well, he's the one that, that took over kind of like the inventor role. He doesn't know everything, but he can help repair Edward as needed as he's finding these parts from these other bots. Mm. So that's where I'm at with that. Uh, also, well, that's where I am with that. I don't know if I want to say the other part. Um, there's more, but it's kind of still half-baked in my head. Uh, All right, so... Let's hear what Patcher would like to do. He might go in a completely different direction. No, no, no. I'm, I'm going to work with, with, uh, with what we have. The only thing I'm going to do is kind of... Jot it down. Bring some stuff. Uh, just bring some stuff to it. So that's all. So the only thing I'm I'm gonna be doing is adding to it. Mm. Kind of, you know. Sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah. If I if I say this, if I don't say this next part, it's gonna make it look like uh, Edward's a bad guy. So you find out that these people that Edward has been killing, uh, these people are with that that group of investors that are trying to buy buy the basically the group of evil inventors. And they've been running experiment on on children, on you know feeble women, on on homeless people, just the worst of the worst. That's why Edward's been going around um, taking them out. Some reason like that. We can think of a better reason, but Edward is not just the killer. He's taking these guys out for a particular reason, right? All right. So working with that, right? Because we want Edward to uh, to be. And an anti-hero, right? Or anti-hero. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He he he's not afraid to uh take desperate measures to get the job done. Right? So with that with that being said, we uh let's let's screen share my my screen over here so we can see this. Ooh, this is a this is a nice one. I like this. Oh man. All right, so here, let me hit screen share. And boom. All right. Okay, so hopefully you guys can see my screen. Uh, I had your name tag wrong. <laughs> no, all right. So here, bring it up to... Um, yeah, yeah, to this old hag looking chick right there here. You, you see my my cursor is uh is hovering around her face. Oh, okay. Yeah, let me screen share that here so people can see it. All yeah. right, there we go. All right. So can you see this one? Like I don't know what it looks yeah, like. Yeah, so it's an old lady that looks like she looks like the lady from Titanic. Real old. Yeah, yeah it is. Is that is <laughs> it's actually the lady from Titanic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so Remember, in the in the the original, it starts off with some old lady telling a story, right? Well, now we and that so that the story we get is from this old lady, and it's Kim, right? And at the end, mm -hmm. we see that okay, this is uh, Kim telling a story. Well, this old hag, she she's um. Edward's sister. So it's the so 
um, the father, Vince Price or whatever, right? He mm -hmm. didn't have a name. So the father, he actually, let's say he, you know, this is his granddaughter or this is his daughter. It don't matter which one, mm -hmm. but this is actually some biological child or creation, right? It could even be um, a, a, the, the last robot that that he made i like it brainstorming all right yeah right now this this last robot as you can see she's old but but when we when we first get the story and i hear let me stop uh sharing because we know that all right this is the old hag that's telling the story so we're, we're paralleling with the first one okay but her story is going to be like i said she's uh the last creation and this is going to fit into what you're saying with uh sharon when sharon dies and all of these people that's dying because they actually kidnap this girl as a little girl right and they knew that that she was a robot the father he created some way for 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 the robot to age okay so she right? may, yeah because as we haven't mentioned we keep forgetting to mention edward's immortal for the most part right he's sort of immortal he doesn't age and at the end of the movie the ladies uh, Kim is an old lady, and at the end of the movie, he's still the same, you know, same age. Right, right. And see, and so that's the thing with this new robot is that it will age and it will die. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's the whole, the, just the, just being finite, having a, a finish, having an end is what truly gives, you know, definition to life. And that's, that's uh, father's greatest gift was not creating uh immortality but actually creating uh, uh a finite ending right so they they want to take they want to merge the little girl and ed to this new biological weapon mm. or to extend the life of the new billionaire guy whatever right yeah yeah he wants it for his own thing working it out i, I like it yeah right. it, it could go either way yeah, working it yeah. out yeah See, ed He's protecting, right? He knew that um, he knew that this was the last creation, right? He didn't know it was going to be the last, but he knew that this was the the where the father was was working. So that might be what. Do. So that might be why he's going so to such right. extremes to protect. Yes, to stop these people, these evil people, but also protect that mansion. Right, because yeah, because it's in actually, is, that, is that creation inside the mansion, or yeah, is, yeah, yeah, they got her. Yeah, that's they, why. These oh, they got her. Is, yeah, okay. these other people are dying because because they have her, right? And you know, he's trying to find. He's trying to find them and, you know, but the extreme measures is because like they're dissecting her. It's not just they're they have her. It's like the fly too and she's sitting in some uh nice facility you know, mm -hmm. uh, 360 degree mirrors or uh, windows everywhere. And yeah. The, you know, three hots in the cot. Like, where nah, nah, where the center like spins. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. no, nah, it's not, it's not like that. Like, no, nah, no, nah. she is that dog that's getting experimented on. Right. And, and only he can hear, he has like an inner connection. He can't see where she is, but he can feel her pain. Right. So, so that's why he's so enraged. So like, that's why, He's going to these drastic measures because he knows what they're doing to her. Does he have some kind of actual connection where he can feel it? Yeah, oh, yeah. He yeah, has an actual that's connection. Only, yeah, 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 yeah. So he feels what she feels. Got you. Okay. You know, so, so like, that's, yeah. that's good. That makes it. Yeah, that's what that's what I was lacking. I was lacking a reason for him to go so extreme. And this is really helping that. Right. Yeah. You know, so now because he can feel what she feels. He doesn't know where she is, but he gets those feelings. Like, so the girl knows who's doing this stuff to her. So when he picks up on it, like, okay, you're the one that's been doing this. It's causing me this anguish, mm -hmm. you know, like he wants to, to, to put it down by any means necessary. Gotcha. You know, so boom, now we have the, these three victims. We got Sharon, um, Tony and Tony and, and who else? Let's go with uh, Bill, Billy. Billy, all right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so so boom, we have our we have a reason for him to to um to be extreme, right? Yeah. Uh, but you know, we'll create different arcs for him to actually 
help other people, not just himself, but you know, yeah, look, yeah, yeah. You know, but he doesn't feel so. You know, look, look, he's he's shutting it down. Like, look, he's not worried about okay, yeah, yeah. this guy needs to go to trial. Like, no, nah, he's not worried about that. You that's know? what I, that's that's what I wanted to see. Like, we, I still want to keep who he is intact, so he still helps the uh, people like that. Either he we doesn't know many people, but people he loves or like innocent. Right. He's an anti-hero, so he you know he won't kill anyone who didn't deserve it, or he won't take them out or stop them. Uh, and he tried. He could even like try to stop them by other means, but if it doesn't work, he can take them out. I'm also right. imagining these action scenes that happen to be real stylized, like like real stylized like Blade, like Blade movies, basically. Uh, so when he fights, that type of movement needs to respect. But go ahead. No, I was uh, looking at Dark when he was talking about the <laughs> thirteen ghosts. Like yeah, that was in the in the lab. Like, man, that would be. Uh... <laughs> he says, "Oh, do like Thirteen Ghosts level house with a lab basement, maybe a Stars Lab level. Could damn, could be a slaughterhouse simulation. John Wick, but Edward Scissorhands. That's what I'm talking about. I want to see these action scenes. Like, right. I'm telling you, like Blade Two or or the Castlevania series. Yeah, something. Yeah. You know. Yeah, like, and, and and like he was saying, like John Wick." but without guns. Like, it's mm-hmm. just him and the scissors. Yeah, and we see a glimpse of it in the old film, because, so, what is it? Uh, the the kid who is kind of his caretaker now, uh, Kevin, in the first movie, he brings Edward to school as a uh, show-and-tell, <laughs> and he's like, uh, he possesses the uh, the most deadly weapons known to man, and Edward does this thing where he's like, right? <laughs> and, he, and everybody's like, holy oh, shit! Uh, that's that's the reason Edward learned to fight and get into that stuff because kind of uh, Kevin kind of like turned him on to it and and got him into that type of thinking, you know. Because Edward, right, like, I, right. But these are just tools. That's what he was thinking. But as the movie goes, you'll we'll do montages or something. That's why Edward is more mobile and can move and can fight now. They don't gotta go eighties, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, yeah. Nah, nah, man. I'm with it. I'm with it. And mm-hmm. uh, because Kevin is using him. Now, Kevin doesn't know about this, uh, the, the final creation. Right? Because Edward, he still is 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 socially awkward. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Now, you know, now his true loyalty is, is to his kind, his father and his sister. Mm-hmm. His sister is gone. He didn't tell anybody about that, but the, you know, the billionaire, like you said, was working with the dad. So he kind of knows about this stuff anyway. Gotcha. I'm thinking right? that, like the way I was thinking uh, that a lot of these boxing creations, Edward, that's, a, it's a big mansion. There could be some vault that he didn't find it until after the first story about right. his sister and all this. That's the only reason he had to go on living without yeah. him. Right. Even so. the, even the Castlevania, we can pull from the Castlevania story and the lore, mm-hmm. whereas, the castle changes, like so. In Castlevania, oh, gotcha. the castle changes. Yeah, right. It changes like maybe every hundred years or every whatever. But, but yeah, it cause, changes because this inventor couldn't have just invented human life through science. He had right. to have some kind of dark arts going on, some kind of right. magic ability. That's what yeah. I always felt. And it might not be like all magic. It's it's a it's a merger of magic and science. Right, right. But even if it, even if it's um. Or an infinity Even stone. If it's magic, right? <laughs> Even if it's science, no matter what it is, this castle or this mansion is alive. It's it's alive. Or possessed by yeah, spirits. Yeah, like it could it's be something. You know, like yeah, it's We're working like, it out. <clears throat> it has a consciousness and it's evolving on its own, right? So just like when you walk in, what you can see, that's not the whole picture. That's not the whole castle. Right. Once you get in there. It's it's larger than than what you see, right? Mm-hmm. So we just look at it and we like, oh man, that's just a you know a condo. But when you get in there, it's like a city. Ooh. It's like man, you know. So so it could be like that to where <clears throat> all of this stuff. That's even a, a reveal is that you know the lab, like everything, all of that stuff is actually taking place in this castle, right? It's just that huge, you know, and um, and it's like man. Like, jeez. Yeah, yeah. Darkwing's saying he had a good comment here. Mm, let's see. He says, Vincent Price is known for zombies and reanimation. So that type of film and stuff like that. 
So yeah. Also, what are we going to do with Vincent Price? Are we doing any flashbacks or any kind of like stuff that wasn't in the original movie? Because we got to show how he used to deal with these people. I'm thinking <laughs> we're going to have to do like Star Wars, like Rogue One, where they brought the actors back via <laughs> full CG model. That's the only <laughs> way. Or you're going to have to hire somebody to play Vincent Price that is a that does a spot on job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. We'll figure about. We'll figure out that later once we figure out our budget. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right. But you definitely want him in there. He was. Uh, he could be like, um, what is Jarvis or <laughs> for, with Tony? Oh yeah, it's still yeah, alive so he's in the in house. Yeah, like he's he's in the house. His his ghost or his spirit or whatever is upload. His you know is yeah, uploaded. Down, they downloaded his consciousness right, into right. something. Nice. Like we can pull we can pull from um, American Horror Story season one, mm. where when you die in the house, then you. are you're there forever, right? You're a ghost yeah. in the house. So, gotcha. you know, like, yeah, the house is magic. Yeah. Something's yeah, exactly. going on. But, and, and, and remember guys, we're just brainstorming here. Some of these stuff might make it into the script. Some of them might not at all. Uh, Darkwing says the Vincent Price thing, we can just do it through audio recordings, which I think is really good because they did that in Bioshock, the video game. Everything was audio recordings. And then I think the original Batman game, that would be, that would be cool too. Yeah. 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 Even if you just, the voice yeah the voice yeah it was in the house you know like but but somehow some way or my, wanted, edward might just be hearing in, in this yeah sorry yeah definitely want him in there uh yeah. or edward could just be hearing this voice in his head i don't know right. we don't oh, know we where we're take, going we could pull uh from harry potter have pictures pictures of you know vince in mm-hmm. different poses and different things in on the walls mm-hmm. right and uh and they actually, you know, boom, the, like yeah, the dialogue is based off of what they right. the painting you're seeing. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. You know, so he'll turn and actually look at you, you know. But that's as really as much as he can interact. Got you, got you. Okay. You know, even through the storytelling and flashbacks, you you get all of that stuff through those paintings mm-hmm. and pictures on the wall. Mm-hmm. You know, so you yeah, know, we that's could, a good that idea. way we can just that's fit them idea. in there. Fit that's a good there. idea, and actually, it would be more. I think that would be a better idea than trying to CGM, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then the, that can, you can CG the story or, or you know how they they make that stuff where it looks fresh and, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, yeah, So, yeah, yeah. it just kind of becomes, turns alive or whatever. So, so right now we have them, um, we have the bots taking them down. We have Edward as the key. He's been upgrading through... Uh, Tony or whatever the brother's name is. No, uh, his name is Kevin. Kevin. So he's been, you know, getting upgrades through Kevin. Yeah. Uh, we have. Is that this. even so, should it be upgrades or should it just be he's maintaining them? All right. He's starting okay. to fall apart. That's what I was thinking. He's starting to fall apart after thirty years, forty years. How long has it been? Depends right, when you we said it, it. You know. You want to put it thirty or forty years? Well, how, Kevin, how old do you think Kim was? How old do you think Kim was at the end of the movie? That's the main thing. If this is a sequel, it'd have to be after the original movie. I think she was probably like 68. Right. So that'll put, you know, Kevin around 50 in his 50s. Yeah. Cause he was way younger. Yeah. Yeah. Cause he was younger. Right. So will she, will she make it? Will she appear in this one? Or I have an idea for her separate than this, but it's kind of going into your downloading consciousness deal. Okay. I'm, I'm letting you go your way. And then I, the part earlier where I was like, oh, I don't know if I want to say this, but it's still half baked. I'll say it just once you get done with your. The direction you're going. No, no, no. We're good. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, so the other thing, it was kind of like what you had with he's protecting his sister or something, right? You're saying she, he's protecting the only other being that's like him. What I was thinking, I don't know how we'll work this in there, but uh, we either go that route where Patrick was saying, or we could branch off and go this route where he's still protecting something inside that mansion that Kevin's been working on in the attic. Uh, what I'm thinking is Somehow something happened where either Kim died, you know, as an old lady when we see her, maybe a break in, uh, maybe these, this is when the inventors first go and start searching. They know she had a connection to, to Edward, you know, uh, and they go and they try to get something goes wrong. They're trying to get her, get some information from her. She ends up getting offed, and gets killed, right? Uh, Kevin finds her, brings her back, her body back to the, uh, the uh, mansion he can't save her body, but he saves her mind, is what I was thinking. So he's been keeping that alive, and him 
him and Edward have been retrieving these parts from these other bots, not only to upgrade himself or maintain himself, but to also build onto this other creation, like a woman form of Edward, right? Uh, she has the scissors too, this and that. And basically what they're trying to do is put that, her mind into this, basically make another Edward, but it's him because this is the love of his life. Kevin cares about it because it's his sister. So, you know, this is, again, it's kind of, kind of like a Frankenstein movie. That's the whole point, too. It's kind of like what Patrick was saying. They're protecting something, and they're trying to get these parts to bring her to life, but they need these parts from these bots as well that Edward's been taking out. Uh, I think I think what's going to happen towards the end of the film is Edward finds this bot, right? Like, they're almost going to bring her bring her back to life. Edward finds this bot, and this bot has something he's never had. He has actual functioning, like, good hands, right? That's what this bot is known for. He, you know, he has actual hands, uh, like a pair of hands. Anyways, awesome fight ensues, and Edward's able to take off this thing's hands, and he's looking at him. Actually, he's already brought, he's already brought Kim back to life, so we get two scissor hand <laughs> people fighting this ultimate bot, right? <laughs> We're scissor hands, two. <laughs> two. <laughs> Corny now. But anyways... Uh, they take out this bot, whatever, right? I don't know how it happens. They take out the bot. Edward takes these hands, and, uh, you know, he's, he's looking at them because this is what he's wanted his whole life. But instead of giving them to himself, he passes them over to Kim. That way, Kim can have more of a, a normal life. Uh, I think that would be pretty a pretty touching moment. It's like, he loves these hands. He's always wanted them, but he loves Kim more. So he takes off her scissor hands and gives her real hands. That would be dope. <laughs> But uh, you know, I'm I'm just spitballing here. All these ideas they may they might sound dumb when I'm saying them out loud. I don't know. I'm just fucking saying nah, whatever. Nah, look, man, look, look. You gotta have that cheese on there. You know, yeah, look, yeah. man. What's it? What's a good with a good Edward Scissorhands movie without that cheese? Okay, so <laughs> look, you need it on there. <laughs> and we don't got. And like I said, we don't got to go that direction. Patrick might want to go a different direction. What do you think? What do you want to nah, do? No, nah, I like that, man. I like that cheese right there. You know, because it's, it's going to be touching, especially with the right music. Yeah, because we're going to have the, the soundtrack. Setting, like it's good. That's going to yeah. be touching, man. You're going to have the Edward Edward Scissorhands soundtrack. Maybe a little bit more updated for like this film, but it's still going to be recognizable. Like there's parts where Edward's going off, cutting uh, hairs, and it's like violin music, really right. fast. Fast and Furious violin music, that's going to be played every time there's a fight or an action scene. Uh, you're going to have the more horror elements of the soundtrack anytime he's stalking his prey or, or one of these evil inventors or from this evil society. Um, and then you'll have, like, for the more somber or touching moments, you'll have the soundtrack that everybody knows as the Edward Scissorhands theme for the most part, or Ice Dance, I think it's called. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's what I was thinking. I say no, no, no. I like it. I like it, man. I um, I think for for the arc, like if if we were using the um, the old lady telling the story, maybe the I old think, lady this time is one of her grandkids. I don't know. Right, right. Now, see, yeah, that's my point. Like, so with mine, the the girl is his sister. Now that we have uh, Kim in there, and she's Edward Scissorhands. Mm -hmm. I feel like um, I feel like both of them should die in this story. Who are the and kids? Now, now, like you said, this old lady is his or is Kim's. You know, some type of Kim's descendant now. Gotcha. Um, they both could be up there, you know, cooking up the snow and you know doing ice sculptures. Oh, at the but, end, uh, yeah, where it zooms up to both of them doing it. Right, right. So now they're getting a blizzard on the town as opposed to, you know, because that's the lore from, uh, and that's one of the things that I like. I know, you know, I'm just jumping out for a second, but, but one of the things that I like about, you know, fairy tales and these type of, um, I can't even think of the name of it, mythologies is like the reason why something happens. So in mm -hmm. this town, the reason why there is snow is because Edward is cutting up those um oh yeah that's those yeah like he's you know like he's cutting that, making sculptures or whatever that's actually a theme from the first movie the kids yeah. ask the grandma grandma why does it snow and that's where right. she goes into that story Damn. check this out patrick so 
as this, these moments are happening, we're going to be hearing this. Yeah. So, as all this is happening, you're going to be hearing <laughs> this. Dope, right? Yeah, 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 man. That music. Look, man, I remember, man that music was awesome. Yeah, that music was awesome, especially because they played with it. Depending on the scenes, they played with the tone, especially like when the mentor died and, he, and Edward chopped the hands because he was trying to grab him. Uh, goes from loving to super dramatic and he's starting to die to uh, just like ominous and, and real right. dark whenever he finally passes away and Edward tries to touch him, but he ends up just scarring it, his father. So, yeah. And then I'm thinking, um, I'm thinking like during the fight scenes and stuff, that's where we'll get these. Uh, Nah, not that. <laughs> You'll get these. Oh, man. Let's see. Let's see if I can find it. You'll get these type of sounds for the fight teams. Imagine they're moving like Blade characters or Castlevania characters. Oh, man, I fucked up. Sorry. Yeah, yeah you this gotta get stuff. to all right. I was about to say because that <laughs> that for a fight scene, you got uh, people ice. It's gonna be fast. Like, it's man. gonna be fast. Yeah, and it might be modified because it's gonna be a new movie. You know, you don't want right, to play right, just right. the old movie. Yeah, this type of feel. I mean, imagine I'm running like on rooftops and shit. And, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, this man is a musical genius, so he knows what he's talking about pacing <laughs> and timing. So yeah, it's gonna be a fast fight, right? But that's just me, you know. It might yeah. be a dumb, it might just be a dumb idea. It might nah, just be nah, a thirteen nah, year music. old than me. Nah, nah. The music you you need that you need the music. Okay, so the music gotta be right. And I and I think I think um, if you know if you're gonna focus because I can see like a, a like a John Wick type of um, not far as with with guns, but just with the scissors. The scissors, yeah. That's why I bring right? up blade because there's a lot of sword play, right. maybe throwing of sharp projectiles, you know, right, stuff right. like but that. See, but yeah, everybody so else guns. is like you know when we get into like a like fighting game lore, mm-hmm. like everybody else is going to be using guns. Okay, that, like, that's yeah, what okay. they use now, right? So it'd be like John Wick versus you know Edward Scissorhands. Got you. Um, you know he's gonna use the scissors. You especially know? Like, the guy, especially the, sorry, especially the guy with the gut, the uh, bot with the hand. <laughs> he can use all kinds of stuff. That would be pretty cool, right? You see what I'm saying? But but that's the thing. Like but but uh, you know Edward Scissorhands from on paper he's gonna look and seem like the character that no one wants to pick, right? Yeah. Because like look, everybody got projectiles, everybody got this, and here you got this one character. He doesn't have any of those projectiles, right? So he's like Voldor from um or uh from Soul Calibur. Yeah, because you don't want him you don't want the antagon what is it, protagonist to feel so OP. Right. You want him to be fighting an uphill battle because you don't want him to seem like, let's say, Superman or something. So Voldo. Right? Voldo. Yeah. He actually gets wounded and stuff, which is another reason why he needs Kevin to maintain him. So that'd be right. Cool. Right. See, so like, yeah, he doesn't have any projectiles, but his movement is on point. Like his, yeah. he's uh, highly evasive, and uh, you know, but he has to get up on his his victims to you know deliver those blows. Yeah. So you know, so he's highly evasive and he's very quiet. He's very sneaky. You know what I mean? So that he can deliver those type of uh, those type of blows. But like you said, every now and then, I mean, look, he's gonna get hit. But luckily for us, he's uh, he is fixable, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you can fix him. But um, and but I like the way you, that you're going, where he never gets those hands, right? Yeah, he doesn't get them. Him gets like, them though. That way, she can right. live a live a more normal life. I like the part that they're actually going to finally get to be together. That might be the cheese, but you know, right? Got to give him a reason to Keep fight. So yeah, <laughs> you just got to give him a reason to fight that aggressively. That's what I'm trying to get. Across. Like if I we're gonna see him be so aggressive and be so violent, then I need to give him a good reason. No, yeah, he's yeah, a loving yeah. character. No, no, no. I, I I definitely agree. I definitely agree with that. And and I, I like that direction. And especially from an action scene, from an action perspective, I think that the John Wick style action piece is where it's just one flowing, 
It's no, it's no real cuts. It's just, boom, he's just clearing out. He, he's like a janitor cleaning up, cleaning up the floor. He's like mopping the floor, yeah. you know? Yeah. He, look, each stroke, like, you're going to see it. It's not going to be, uh, blink, they're gone now. Like, nah, nah. We're going to watch him mop each square foot of this yeah. floor. Like, you know, so I think that'll be crazy and it'll be fresh. And just like I said, he's highly evasive, like Valdo. Actually, he, he, you know, he fights like gotcha. Valdo from uh, from Soul Cow from the Soul Cow series. <laughs> Boo says, "Put Edward to their hand and peck him." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, Why not so. at this point? So yeah, man. Uh, look, I like it, man. I, I think it's uh, I think it's a good sequel. I, I like it too, man. I, I'm like what I want to ask is if anybody in chat or anybody watching or listening to this podcast in the future, uh, you know, if you don't like. Some of our ideas, pitch us your ideas, or if you see something that that would make more sense or could could fix the problems, just you know, type that in the uh, comments or let us know. Um, yeah. So, what do you think, Patser? Uh, that is that our sequel? Yeah, man. I think uh, I think that's the sequel. I mean, you know, we have the we have the beginning, right? Um, the middle you're right now see with the beginning with the killing mm -hmm. um now that we're not using the girl we're not using a little girl as you know the reason why he's killing mm -hmm. uh so we have the the old kim so we have yeah. kim well is, we have kim's mind right first, right yeah. so maybe yeah. so you know maybe he's trying to get like like you you feel me like because Kim, I think that has to be the reason, even if it's not exposed in the very beginning, that Kim is the reason that he's going to these drastic measures because we know that he loves her that much that he would do that. Yeah. Yeah, right? we know because he did it. He did it to Jim. That's the point I was trying to get across earlier. He did it to uh, Jim because that, that's the one thing he would protect. That's the right. one time he stood up and stopped taking it. Yeah. So, so then now... Right. Uh, maybe she uh, Edward and Kevin, they're cooking up this plan. Look, we're going maybe she's in like intensive care. She's, you know, right. Yeah, she could just be room. in intensive care. Right. See, maybe nothing ever happened to her. She's just in, in intensive care and they're cooking right. up and preparing everything to bring yeah, yeah. her. Right. Right. She's in like hospice or something. Maybe, yeah. you know, she's on her deathbed and um, and they're trying to they're trying to kidnap her. To you know, to do whatever they want to do. The reason Ed, Ed and oh. Kevin wants to you know bring her over mm -hmm. to uh, to the immortal side of town. Yeah, and the, and and the reason I wanted something to the reason I wanted it to happen in a way that something happens to her, like that she was unjustly taken from this world or whatever, is because if you just take her from the hospital and kidnap her, now you're looking like the bad guy, or maybe she doesn't want that, you know. But if it looked like he didn't want to die and, and they took her out, or maybe that's the reason she got put in the hospital, then it makes more sense to like try to bring her. Right, back right. To life. So, yeah, yeah. They, yeah. So, they actually cause whatever the, the element or whatever is the problem yeah. that she's in we'll the hospital the, dying, mm -hmm. it's because of them. We'll call it them the society. <laughs> right, right. See, so then now, yeah. you know, uh, Ed. <laughs> He's, uh, you know, he's out there. He's he's going for revenge on those who caused that honor, mm -hmm. right? So we got that we got that going on, and then we have uh, the bots. Mm -hmm. We have, you know, Ed has been being maintained by Kevin. Mm -hmm. We have a new a new robot or a new bot that's has uh, guns for hand. He's a, he has hands. He has guns for hands, right? His his yeah. hands open up, and he has like a gun. And I forgot which movie was like that. It was somebody yeah. who had uh, their hand kind of mm -hmm. like you know had like a little blast, like a Mega Man cannon type of thing to him. Probably a uh, Ghost in the Shell or something like that. Yeah, it was something, man. It was something recent. I, I I like can get a visual of it, right? So you have that going on. So we have. Um, Did you want to share any of the images you were looking at, or? Uh, no, 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 Mark, because okay. just only because um, they I have like a picture of Valdo, but it, that doesn't really matter in this gotcha. instance. But 
No, it's all good. It's all good for this uh, for this sequel. Got you. Yeah, but I'm sure there's like holes and stuff that needs to be filled in. But we're literally just sitting down right now and creating this on the fly, basically, right? Right. I mean, we came with came in with a couple of pieces and just went from there. Uh, Pat, sir, if you would have started speaking before I did, he might have took the story in a totally different direction. It might have yeah, been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would have. Yeah, I would have did a yeah. reboot. You would have did a reboot. Yeah. Ah, with like, so we're gonna we're gonna retell the whole story with new actors and stuff. Yeah, yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. We would we would have did um we would have did like a reboot of it and uh, and kept you know kept like the the main arc like that mm-hmm. arc would have stayed consistent, yeah. but it just would have looked different. Gotcha. So um so one of the main things that I pulled right because like both of us even though we didn't speak about it, but both of us thought about the crow. Yeah, <laughs> right. Both of us thought about the crow. But one of the images that um that I really thought thought about for my intro was um it was Friday the thirteenth, uh I think it was part six. Gotcha. I think it was six. Where the there's a couple in the car and they're on some whatever trip, they're on like a road trip, and I think Jason he uh he gets them now that might be eight because I know that one of them they didn't have enough kills, and so that could have been like yeah. Jason takes Manhattan because yeah. Jason takes Manhattan didn't have enough kills, so they just like threw in, but it could have even been six like mm-hmm. but uh <laughs> but you know gotcha. ooh, you know, so um, what up man uh what up, Furby? Herb, yeah, for, <laughs> Dirty Furby. You know? The man of 10 names. Yeah, yeah. For 50 <laughs> names over here. 50 man. names. So, uh, so yeah, yeah. That's, that's, the, that's the direction that, that I would have took. Um, but gotcha. I like this direction. Yeah, because, yeah. Because, um, you know, look, we, we're going to take one direction. So yeah, we got, yeah, exactly. We can combine stuff, but it's hard to go all directions. Uh, you know what I thought about, too? Maybe that part where I said Edward was the one slashing these people. Remember, it was like Edward in the beginning, Edward stalking his Ooh, prey. That's right. people remember, remember I said that in the yep. beginning? Maybe it's not him. Maybe it's another bot that also had claws, right? Right, like scissors, right. They look like claws in the dark. They look like scissors in the darkness. Maybe instead of the bot coming in to stop him, he's the one that comes in and stops the bot to save these people. Right. But you can go any direction. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. But I think it's good leaving it ambiguous to where you don't know what's going on when you're first watching it. Yeah. So you're, first, you, you, you're looking at it, it's like, man... Edward killed him, right? So, like, le- maybe later on, it's revealed that it was no, it, right, right, it yeah, was yeah. this was bot, stopping. yeah, right, that you know took him, took down uh, whoever these innocent people because uh, they was actually built. They were working for the billionaire. And they knew his secrets, so he wanted to wrap up like it. loose ends. So he had him killed. I like it, yeah. And he didn't want to pay um, social security, you know, because they was they was up. <laughs> In oh the next my four years, like, look, man, he killing two birds with one oh stone out here, okay? I like that. Um, Dirty Furby says, wait, they're doing it, an Edward Scissorhands reboot? Nah, man, so what, what we're doing is this is actually Patcher's idea. Uh, I'm not going to give you any of the ideas that he would talk to me on the phone, but he'll send me these WhatsApp messages of these just brainstorm things that he has uh, as he's working, I guess. And they're awesome, man. Like, sometimes they're just really good stories where you, like, start tearing up or... They're like uh, just a, an original take on something, and you're like, "Ooh, I would love to see that in theater." Uh, theater, right? It was actually his idea, and he has a few. I'd like him to talk about them here on on stream one day. Oh yeah, but, we are. But he may possibly be writing the script, so I don't know. <laughs> nah, nah. Look, man, I'm gonna, we'll put them out here for the people, and you know, look, man, whatever happens, yeah. happens. So yeah. So basically, what we're doing is just we talk about a film for a short you know, segment, and then we decide, does that film, would it be cool to see a prequel, sequel, or reboot? And then just, we write, like, these what-if scenarios or script about them. That's all the idea is. Yeah, yeah, man. And, uh, look, I like like I said, I really like this, this sequel, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, I like the sequel. And uh, the main thing that I, you know, it's like, man, is that you? I like how you tied in the Frankenstein theme and mm-hmm. then with the 
the bride of Frankenstein. You see what I'm oh, saying? Like, I didn't, I didn't even see, see that. that. You did it. So <laughs> yeah, listen, thanks, man. man. But uh, I like how you did that, man. Like, yo, I didn't see it coming, but you you look, you tied it in. Like, it was fresh. So I, would, I like it. I like it. Well, what would be awesome is one if, if one of the listeners or somebody that was really talented at writing could take all the notes down that we were talking about, everything, all the ideas we had today, and kind of clam into a cohesive, <laughs> you know, script. I mean, I could do it too, but I'm not, I'm not like the most talented actual like writer, you know? Uh, but yeah, I mean, I mean, I could do it. I'll just sit there every day and add right, a little right, bit. Right. But you got me. stuff to do, man. You got other yeah, podcasts, yeah, yeah. you got gaming, like it's so much stuff to yeah. do, man. I think that, uh, I think that this format, what we're doing is going to be entertaining, you know, uh, from a visual standpoint and just from an audio standpoint, you listening to it on the artistry of, or you listening to it and watching it on the BAM cast. I think either one, I think that the listener is gonna gonna have a uh, an enjoyable experience and be able to either drive to work or drive home or you know just kind of get away from the moment. I think that what we just did and what you're doing is going to uh, is definitely gonna allow people to uh, to to escape and just to have a good time. Look, man, hanging out with the fellas, you know. So I th- I think that this is good. All right. So do you want to? I did our our intro. Would you like to do our outro? Oh, all right. Uh, look, man, I, I don't even think of anything. Um, I, I don't think of anything either. I'd do it on fly. That's why I sound right, like more right. Look, <laughs> look. So, you know, far as uh, far as the the podcast, um, I just usually kind of go over what's gonna be happening in the future. Um, so, guys, something to look forward to is uh, I'm gonna be doing the serial killer. Yes. I'm going to be doing that on Twitch. So it's going to oh, be nice. live, you know, so we'll see how that goes. So, yeah, so that's going to be cooking up um, this week, actually. Mm-hmm. So we got that going on. That's coming up this week. We're going to be cooking that up. And uh, and I think that's as far as as far as I got, you know, so that'll cool, be cool. on Pats or underscore nine nine. And um, so that's it from my end. Go ahead, whatever you would. Uh, oh, cool. Yeah. Check out. Uh, also, you're gonna be bringing back the actual podcast anytime soon. Yeah, the yeah, it's up. yeah, oh, yeah it's up? up. Yep, it's all, all right. So yeah, the, He's... yeah, did that, and because of you, because of you, man, like oh, you inspired me to uh, to get back on because your last your your reboot of the series, you know, the Bamcast, <laughs> man, the promo, it was so, man, it was so cool, man. I, I, Thanks, I man. enjoyed it so much. I was like, man, you know, I got to jump back on the bike, you know, yeah. And, uh, and you know and, and drop it so yeah I, I actually dropped um it's called uh i think it's called boogie on it's 97 episode 97 mm-hmm. it, i published it wednesday i didn't put oh, it it's, in up, the Discord, it's up already yeah, yeah yeah i'll put it up i'm, 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 I'm gonna drop it in the Discord. i'm subscribed to your stitcher i didn't get a notification unless i missed it oh yeah. you're on what are all the services you're on or whatever man it's on everything like it's, it's on uh, everything right <laughs> yeah yeah so the yeah. artistry of podcast by uh bo miles right that's what you named yep. it by bo miles i listen to it all the time listen to his podcast because yeah i know we we go over fun topics here he also does that on his podcast but he also goes into like some real deep stuff too that i have you thinking so when you're at work just plug in some headphones i'll be at work and man he had a soothing voice for <laughs> one so he has a good voice for uh you know radio and stuff like that but uh the topics he goes over so even when they're deep, he still has some comedy in there. He still make light of it, uh, but he still goes deep too. So, uh, and sometimes he he interviewed people t- as well. It's just a really good podcast. Check him out. I'm gonna put all the links to his podcast, my podcast, everything we do in the description of the video. Once I wherever I post it, and once um we're done with this podcast. Yeah, and I definitely want um I want all the listeners to to at least try to join uh bam's discord you know some of y'all are gonna get kicked out you know what i mean some of y'all are really weird like yo it is what it is like yo y'all not gonna last but you know at least look, i give you a chance you feel me like so so for my listeners out there who listening um on the artistry of uh definitely like look if you really want it, you're going to be able to find it. So I'm not going to tell you, look, put in uh, HTTP, like, nah, nah, man. If you really want it, you're going to be able to find it, okay? So definitely find it. 
join, you'll be able to uh, you'll be able to connect with me. You'll be able to connect with Bam. So you know, look, if you really want it, you're gonna be able to find it. So that's all I'm gonna say. I'm not giving you look up, up, down, nah, nah. I'm not giving you no codes. Like you find it if you really want it. So all right. Well, what do you think? We out. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's it, right, guys. I appreciate y'all. Thanks, everybody. See y'all. See y'all next time. There we go. That was the episode. All right. It was good. It was a good episode. I definitely like the ideas and um, I I definitely can't wait for more. So if you guys want to check out more, definitely go um, to Esteban's page. Right. He's on Twitch. Esteban underscore uh, maybe seven, nine, seven or nine, seven, nine. Let me see if I can get it up here real quick while let me uh, pause this so that way I can get it. All right, so we got it pulled up. It's Estebam underscore 979. So that's on Twitch. So if you guys like what you, uh, what you heard, just go to Twitch and type in Estebam underscore 979 and follow him. You know, he's going to be putting up um, some more content, which the episode that he had uh, before this, it was like Mortal Kombat. That was a really good episode. So I definitely employ you guys to go and check that out. And he does um, all types of cool stuff. And he has a Discord that I'm in. <clears throat> so if you guys go to uh, his Twitch page, and follow, you'll find his, his Discord. And then from there, boom, jump in and uh, say what's up to your boy, Bo Miles, a.k.a. Patzer. You know what time it is. <laughs> so until uh, until the next episode. Till the next episode, yeah, hell yeah. Reese's p p p p p c c c c c c c c c c c c c c c c c c c And have a good time Time for free, that's how I live my life Inhale high, enjoying the vibes Got no time for bullshit in my life I'ma kick back and have a good time Time for free, that's how I live my life Inhale high, enjoying the vibes Got no time for bullshit in my life Super Saiyan with this flow Like the gene of my heart stay cold Smoking on that Saiyan bro Feeling like I'm on the Nimbus cloud, yo I just want it all, I just want a ball Wanna go to the mall, not care about the cost Puffin' on the dope is dope, in a sweet or a raw Hella high, sing a catchy song My mind, stay floating Smoking on this potent Got my mind constantly going Has me going slow motion Wanna be sipping Arizona tea Rolling up the finest heat Oh, in San Diego, got a Living how I should be I'm just trying to live my life So my blood and stay lit Look at the drama, that's my mindset Feeling good, just vibing You can catch me smiling I'm up in the clouds, I'm flying Got no time for no bullshit or lying I'ma keep back and have a good time Drama free, that's how I live my life Take it to my parents. Give me some video games. Give me some double cheese, buddy. Give me some good ass weed. Let's go. Go.